This is the Rodelink wireless microphone transmitter and receiver kit. It has two parts, the belt pack transmitter unit and a receiver, both around the size of a pack of cigarettes. Both are made of plastic and though they feel reasonably substantial, you would probably want to take care of them. Also included are a small Lavalier microphone with tie clip, foam windshield and furry wind jammer, and there's one of Rode's Micon connectors to plug the microphone lead into the 3.5mm socket on the transmitter. Connection from the receiver to the camcorder is by unbalanced 3.5mm jacks, though the lead is so short it's unlikely to pick up much electrical interference unless you're unlucky. The receiver has a cold shoe mount screwed in underneath, so it can easily be put onto a camcorder or DSLR. Finally, there's a little pouch to keep the mic in, though it's a shame that the excellent waterproof, dropproof, and quite probably bombproof little box that you get if you buy a Rode Lavalier standalone isn't included. The units open by pushing a button on the back and sliding it away from you. This feels bizarre as if it's the wrong way, but we'll live with it. Power comes from two AA cells in each unit. Switching on is by holding the button down for a couple of seconds. A channel number is given which needs to match on the receiver and transmitter, at which point the two will sync up and you're ready to go, with a rough guide to the audio levels shown on the receiver's screen. This dims after a few seconds to save power. Eight channels are available and the units are paired from the factory, so all you have to do is select the same channel on transmitter and receiver and click the red button to make them sync up. Input gain on the transmitter can be boosted by none, 10 or 20 dB. Take it too high and the green LED on the top button will show red, indicating overload. Though in our tests it did once distort even though it didn't flicker red, so do test in advance if possible. The receiver likewise has a gain reduction if needed in its output to the camcorder. By giving the transmitter as much boost as possible without distorting, and the receiver as little reduction as you can, you should get clean high levels into your recorder. There's a mute button on the receiver indicated by the buttons both turning red, so the interviewee can be left unheard while they take a natural break. Equally, the transmitter wearer can mute themselves by a brief press and hold on the button. So, what's the system like in use? There are two issues to consider in any radio mic system. Firstly, what does it sound like? And secondly, over what distance can it reliably transmit and receive? The first question breaks down into two further elements. What does the microphone itself sound like? And how does the transmission and reception process affect that sound, if at all? To start with then, let's get a baseline by comparing the supplied Rode mic with an industry standard Sony ECM77. This is not to pitch them against each other per se, just to give you an idea of the Rode's quality against a known benchmark. This is a direct comparison test of the Rode Lavalier microphone supplied with the Rode Link wireless audio system against an industry standard lapel mic, the Sony ECM77. For the purposes of this comparison, the microphones are not transmitting through the Rodelink system, rather they're being directly recorded into a Canon XF200 camcorder using LPCM uncompressed recording for the optimum quality. The Sony microphone is a more expensive unit than the Rode, but not hugely so. The Rode Lavalier on its own retails for around £170 here in the UK. The Sony has a variety of prices depending on which end connector you have with it, but around £220 would be the right mark. So once again, the purpose of this comparison is not to test the wireless audio system itself, but the microphone supplied with it, and simply give you an idea of the quality of the microphone in comparison with an industry standard. The Rode, we would say, is perfectly pleasant, and like their other mics, a richer, bassier sound perhaps than the somewhat crisp Sony. Next, how does the system used for digital encoding and transmission affect that microphone's sound? Here's a test comparing a directly recorded sample against one done over the Rode link. 
For this test, the transmitter and receiver were only one foot apart to ensure the best signal reception, such that the test was not affected by any digital breakup or noise correction that the unit might otherwise have to undertake. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for the Dormouse, thought Alice, only as it's asleep I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room, no room, they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly, and she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. I'll now be quiet for a second and we can just hear how the receiver sounds with the mic open to the room and no sound. It should be noted that there is a very slight hum coming from the camcorder, but it is quite negligible. We'd say the wireless version loses a little low end over the wired connection, but is perfectly acceptable. So far, so good. And speaking of far, that's the next test. Well, I'm now wearing the uh, lavalier microphone here. I've got the transmitter inside my jacket pocket. And the first test I'm going to do is simply a range test. I'm going to walk away from the camera, back up this road and see how far I get until the signal drops out. So forgive me, I'm just going to keep rabbiting on so you can hear that there is something being transmitted. I'm also going to turn around so I can see where I'm going and be aware, of course, that that now means that my body is actually partially blocking the transmitter, but hopefully that won't have too much of an impact. And I'll just walk up this road, and as I go, I'll point out you can probably hear the sound of a lot of air conditioning vents from the building to my left here. It's partly a TV studios and partly a, a data centre. There's an awful lot of computers in there, and I'll come back to that in a moment on another test but uh, there are an awful lot of air conditioning units and they're all blowing air out, but I've now gone past those. So I'll just keep on walking up here to the front of the building. There's a little roadway here and then it goes up a bank and there is a tree and I'll carry on past that and then I get to the edge of the facility and we'll see if the radio system, the wireless link from road is still working. Right, here I go up the bank and I'm passing through a big oak tree branches here which might cause some signal dropout actually because they will be blocking the transmission path of the system depending on exactly where I stand. I'm now in the rear car park of this uh, facility and I think that'll probably do. That is possibly, well, I'm not very good with distances but 100 yards I suppose, something like that. I'm going to start coming back towards the camera now and I suppose that means that my body is no longer blocking the radio mic signal coming through the tree, past the road sign, over the road, back through the probably steel mesh fence, which might have an effect on transmission, I suppose. And then walking back down the road, past the TV studios come data center. I would hope that at the point where I am now, it's all nice and audible and clear, past the satellite dishes, and once again, walking past the quite loud air conditioning vents which run I guess 24 7 using up a lot of power keeping all those computers cool and keeping keeping them ticking over so now I'm probably I suppose 20 meters away possibly less actually no, it's probably about 20 meters from the camera coming back to my original start point and if we're lucky then it's all sounding crystal clear and sharp and I hope this gives you a, a good idea of what the range is like on this Roadlink wireless system. Now I mentioned as I was walking up that I would mention the uh, data centre a little more and that is because the environment I'm testing this in really is a, a particularly harsh environment to try a radio mic out on. That as I say is a data centre. It is stuffed full of computers, air conditioning units, all kinds of electrical gubbins which are not only physically noisy as you can probably hear from the fans but they're electrically noisy as well in the Wi-Fi bands in various other frequency bands there's a lot of electrical noise coming from that building but then over to my left about another hundred yards away I suppose 
is another data centre. It's some sort of secret computer facility. Don't really know what goes on there, but it's stuffed full of computers. And so all around me here, as I'm talking to you over the Roadlink system, the poor little Roadlink is being bombarded by electrical interference. So although it might just look like I'm standing in a car park, in fact, it's quite a good test of how well this thing can stand up to being sort of bombarded by nasty signals from all around. So just being here and standing talking to you is doing quite well, let alone the range test which we just did. In addition to all the interference from the buildings and so on, I've got here a, a, an iPhone which I'm going to turn its personal hotspot on, so this is now emitting a Wi-Fi signal, and I've got a MiFi dongle which is also emitting a little Wi-Fi signal. I'm going to put both of those into my pocket with the transmitter, if they'll fit, which they will, and also down here I've got a little Canon um, XA20 and I've turned its Wi-Fi control on, so it too is now emitting a little Wi-Fi hotspot, and I'm going to leave that underneath the filming camera so it will affect, potentially, the um, Roadlink receiver. So I'll just pop that down there, and I'm going to keep talking just here for a couple of seconds to see whether putting those devices in my pocket has made any effect on the signal. And I don't really need to walk away and do a range test, because really the question here is, does sticking a load of Wi-Fi in very close proximity to either the transmitter or the receiver actually affect the Roadlink system in any way? Obviously, I'm hoping it doesn't. The theory is that there is enough frequency space within the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, and the system is clever enough to hop and skip and a jump between the frequencies so that it can avoid anything that will give it interference. But on the other hand, I have just put a load of transmission gear right next to the Roadlink transmitter. All right, that'll do. I'm going to listen to this on headphones. You've been listening to it back. Hopefully, that was a useful stress test. In conclusion, we think this is an inexpensive, very easy to use and good quality system. Our only negatives are a slight concern about the solidity of the units standing up to any abuse, and we have seen smaller transmitter packs in our time, although for many applications this shouldn't prove to be a burden. Thank you for watching. If this review was useful to you, then please do click the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Goodbye.